to win. Keep going. Okay, guys, I'm kind of just doing a short little review on this uh, Springfield Armory government model scope. 6 to 20 power. Um, I think it's uh, mil dot radical. I think off the look, make sure. But at any rate, <clears throat> illuminated radical. It's old school. It's a great scope. This thing was made back around the 2000 time frame by a company named Hako, and I don't think they're in business anymore. But they made these are good scopes. Springfield Armory government model scopes. This is one of their, I think this is their last version of the government model scope series. And um, so I'm going to kind of just give you a little rundown on it. As you can see, first, while I got this thing all lined up, take a look. And if you look towards the bottom, you can see as I move it a little bit, the scope has a, it physically has a level inside of it. So, so you can keep the, uh, obviously to keep the canting of the rifle consistent. Um, and then, of course, it's got an illuminated reticle. This is a 6 by 20 by 56. It has a huge objective lens. The glass on it is really, really good. Um, it has a, a front um, parallax adjustment, old school. It does have military style uh, turrets on it with mil dot uh, turrets. And this is what's, uh, what is, I think, is one of the nicest things about this scope which is not usually the case for American scopes but this is a first focal plane scope and for those of you that know what that is that's no big deal then for you to understand it but for you that don't there's a first there, first focal plane and second focal plane uh, reticles in scopes and most American scopes have a second focal plane reticle meaning that as you increase the power setting on the scope, the reticle will the reticle will remain the same size. Where a first focal plane, the reticle will increase with magnification of the scope. And so, long story short, is on a second plane focal on a, on a second focal plane reticle, your range calculations for the turrets and all that are only calibrated for one power setting whereas if you have a first focal plane reticle your calculations no matter what the power is is always the same as far as your uh, elevation and windage calculations if that makes sense to you so I think and that's more of a European thing but so let me see if I can't uh, let me see if I can't give this thing a little spin here and show you I'm trying to do this I'm trying to hold the camera here let's see if we can do that there, see so that's so why I turn it down see and this is going down to the smallest setting and if you look I can get the uh, Yep. If you look, I can get the level. If you look, you can see it kind of makes creates a, a green dot too in the level when it is level, which I think is very cool. But as I increase the power on it, you can see how the reticle gets larger too. Like I say, that's typical of European scopes more than it is of American scopes. But so there you go. Let's see here. There, that's pretty good right there I think okay, so there you go two like you say there these are yeah MOA click adjustments it's really these are really nice scopes I have to say got uh, your parallax adjustments are up here up front here 
big objective, 56 millimeter objective, 30 millimeter tube. This is, I think, this is back when tactic. This is like a premier tactical scope back in the day. This is when they were starting to get into making these things in in earnest. Um, and this is, I have another one on my M1A, which is a uh, four to fourteen power one, uh, not illuminated reticle. And it works terrific too. This scope. And there's one click, uh, quarter MOA adjustments, yep, nice, nice turrets. These things have rock, rock solid, rock solid adjustments to them. Power ring, of course your um, focus for your reticle, your parallax adjustment up front, old school, and where the, uh, and it has your turret for the illuminated reticle well and of course what this uh, Springfield government model scope is on is uh, my uh, Grunig I'll just take a look around the Grunig is this is a Grunig precision rifle it was made in 2001 um, by Grunig Precision at Riverside, California. Douglas Barrel, fully blueprinted Remington 700 action. I mean, it's it's a machine. It's it's a Grunig Precision rifle. But uh, that's what I have uh, the scope mounted on, and is a. Uh, FYI, this this rifle. It was uh, when it was built. It was built in 30-06, 2001. And at first, I thought that was kind of odd. I didn't buy it brand new. I got it secondhand. I got it from the guy who had it made. And. Um, I says, why didn't you get it done in 300 win mag? Well, and he proceeded to convince me and tell me why 30-06 was a better choice. And that being, of course, one is its casings are are cheaper, more more reusable. They take less powder. And and true to his word, he says that this rifle will propel a 190 grain Sierra Match King at over 2,900 foot a second with uh, the right load and I'll be damned if he wasn't exactly right as a matter of fact the load he told me to put in this that he used what he would use would uh, push 190 grain Sierra Match King on a on a warm day uh, at, thir at 3,000 foot a second and so that's that's 300 wind mag territory so, in light of all that, I think that perhaps the uh, 30-06 might actually be a, a better round. I mean, the, the bullet doesn't know, the target doesn't know the difference between, you know, if it's going 2,900 foot a second, whether it's coming out of a 300 wind mag or a 30-06, right? And not only that, but it, the recoil is less and... There's not really any disadvantages to it. You can go anywhere. You can go anywhere in the world and go into mom pop's shop, and you'll see some 30 out six ammunition for sale if they have any. So, anyways, but uh, this thing's attack driver. The the Grunig is a beast. It absolutely is. Um, it's heavy as it's heavy as the day is long though. You're not taking this rifle hunting. So, but anyways, I wanted to do a little review on that on my uh, my scope. I just put some batteries in it. I haven't used it in a while, so it went dead. So I just put some batteries in it. So I figured, yeah, what the hell? While I'm at it, I'll do just a little. I'll go over, go around the scope here. 
So, alright guys, thanks for watching.